I think the visual should change. And he'll open it. Yeah, there it is. Awesome. Okay. Thank you all for jumping in and joining us on your lunch break today for Oklahoma City, uh, our OKC Design and Tech September event. Last month, we had a happy hour and we had a bunch of new faces come out to um, that Fassler Hall. <laughs> that was like the, brewer, the, the German brewer, brewery. Um, but yeah, Fassler Hall last month. This month, we're jumping back into a virtual meetup and we'll probably do another one in October and November and then wrap that up for 2021. So today we have um, an awesome speaker. Um, Mark, I'm always going to say it wrong, but like, good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Okay, I was very close. Um, we have a speaker from Heartland. He is a senior business analyst and scrum master for our Heartland payroll team. And recently he's been working with our Heartland customer experience design team, um, which has been pretty exciting. Um, he's going to be talking about gamification framework and how can we have healthy, healthy and happy lives um, within all of that. So I'll just let, you know, Mark jump in here and you guys feel free to reach out um, in our Slack channel with questions. If the questions are open in Twitch, um, feel free to write them there um, and we'll get to those uh, when they pop up and or at the end. Okay. Awesome. Thank you again. And Mark, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll let you take it away. Yeah, thank you. And uh, first thing, yeah, thanks for sacrificing some of your lunch to, to see me talk. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully this is good information and the minimum is entertaining. So uh, <laughs> the most important thing is, you know, who is this guy? Um, well, my name's Mark. She already said most of this stuff. I, the most important thing I want to put out here is, uh, you know, I'm terrible with calendars. Uh, but, uh, so I appreciate y'all coming because I might not have made it, <laughs> uh, going into this, what we're going to do today is kind of talk about gamifying and why gamifying is important. Um, but this quote is one of my favorite quotes kind of dealing with this and, and to break it down, what, what he's saying in this quote is, is that, you know, it's if you just sit down and you stare and you're like, I'm going to have an idea or I'm going to do a thing, it's so much harder than if you kind of relax and just enjoy and you play with it. There's a reason why there's a saying out there that says when someone has a problem or wants to think about something, they say, well, hang on, let me play with it. Uh, and really, they mean experiment and, and kind of enjoy the process of creating something. Um, that's what this particular quote means and i think it's a pretty good example of how we take that and then then apply it to the workplace we can actually have people enjoy themselves while actually producing at the same time so to kind of go over what we're doing today we're going to discuss gamification kind of at a high level like what is it what are different types because there's more than one and then get into the specifics of the race framework um again this this is kind of couched in agile scrum terminology because that's where I'm from. But I want to be clear that this has nothing to do with agile or, or scrum, except that it can apply to that. You can easily apply this outside of that in any working arrangement that you have, as long as it's team based. So going into this, uh, the first thing I want to do is create something fun with you guys. So I hope all of you have seen the classic movie, Super Troopers. And if you remember, there's a scene where the guy says meow when he's, you know, given a ticket. So what I'd like to do is uh, ask for you guys to go to this link and I'll bring it up here in a second. And this is going to kind of be a vote. Okay. So go here, use that code and throw in a word that you'd like to see me use throughout the presentation. And I'll, I'll work it in. And then at the end, um, and Tori or Doji, whoever is able to, could one of you keep track? Because I'll just be rocking along. But the amount yeah. of times I say that word, I'd like you all oh, to no. guess at the end. <laughs> so, so Tori will be our official, our official word yeah. keeper. But what I'd like you to do is, is go here, just uh, throw in a word that you'd like me to say, even if it's just meow. And I'll work it in, write meow <laughs> to the conversation. Um, and I did put the link into our user group on Slack. Cool. 
So I'll give this like a, a minute or two, see what we come up with as people throw in words, uh, keep an eye out, they'll show up on the screen and they'll get bigger as well. So, so for instance, victorious. Oh, nice. Uh, and I, I should say there's one caveat to this whole thing. They obviously have to be, you know, professional in some aspect, uh, as much as I enjoy cursing. <laughs> <laughs> and and keep yeah, in mind, save our, save our work. Yeah. And uh, keep in mind, uh, you can pick these, uh, you can vote for other people's words too. So I see MFA in there. So whoever's from Heartland, I feel you. Oh, but yeah. uh, I'm vetoing that one. That's not mine. <laughs> so uh, again, you see these words, you can also choose these words, type them in, and that'll bump the word to be bigger. Because I'll pick either the center word or the biggest word in about, uh, we'll give it another minute or two. And feel free to refresh and vote again if you need to on a word twice, yeah. as long as it's not your own. Don't cheat. <laughs> All right, well, looks like I'm not seeing any motion here. So I'm going to go with frazzled then because I like it and it's in the center right now. Um, so I'll work uh, frazzled in unless there's any last minute. Oh, okay. We're doing frazzled. Yeah, it looks like so. I tried to vote again and um, it didn't let you. I think I have to log in. Oh, maybe. All right, well, I won't worry about it. We'll go with frazzled. That, that'll work for me. Um, all right, so moving in the presentation, uh, this, this slide's a much, I get it, but uh, I really wanted to share this slide because to me, it is one of the key ways of defining gamification, and this is through Gartner, but uh, just read the bold parts, they're the most important. Um, the goal is you're using game mechanics and design to digitally enhance, uh, digitally engage and motivate people to achieve their goals, right? And this ties in a little bit to, I'm going to name drop Daniel Pink's book, Drive, because it's amazing. He, he goes into autonomy, mastery, and purpose are the three intrinsic motivators for people to want to do things. Um, so this tries to engage people, tries to motivate them, and, and there's some level of autonomy with gameplay. So uh, if you're interested in more of this, I don't really want to touch on this too heavily because to me, game, everyone should understand gamifying, it's making things into a game, you know, with the purpose of getting people more involved. Um, it can be complicated, it can be simple, but that's the thrust of it. So what I'd like to talk about though is the types because there are actually multiple different types, just like there are different types of games, you know, that you play on your Xbox. Um, so for instance, there are competitive games. So if you've ever been part of an organization where, for instance, they go and say, hey, the top salesperson gets a trip to Bermuda. Uh, everybody else, top 10 get, you know, $10 gift cards and everybody else gets nothing. That's competitive. You're playing against your peers. So there are some problems with this, right? Because it doesn't encourage people to work together. So you really build person A and person B, person A might cut throat person B just to get, you know, that Bermuda prize. So that's one form of it. Then the other, the other more mature form is single player. So same situation where, hey, all of you can go to Bermuda, but you need to get $100,000 in sales to go to Bermuda. So, but you, you can get, you know, various other prizes at different dollar amounts. So this is single player. So that's, that's an evolution from competitive. So now you're not actively competing, but the trick here is there's no incentive for you to help anyone else. So the company doesn't gain or net as much from single player because you are gonna to wanna to get yours to that goal that for that Bermuda trip. Um, and you have no incentive to help person B except you're a nice person or, you know, community, but the system itself is not inclined to move in that direction. So the further evolution now, right, is cooperative or co-op gamification. And 
the platform I'm talking about is one of the ways to do that. But cooperative is where you say, hey guys, you as a group have to achieve X, Y, Z or do X, Y, Z to get a reward. So then people are incentivized to collaborate with their neighbors, their peers, and, and kind of build this, this small tight-knit group that succeeds. Now it doesn't, it doesn't get rid of all the problems, but it's just one of the current evolutions of the gamification kind of in the workplace. So with those in mind, um, I would actually like to know what kind of gamification you have experienced in the workplace. So this is more for me, there's co-op, competitive, single player, none, or other, like have you experienced something that really doesn't defies the categories I have? So with that in mind, sorry, I'm a little frazzled, but uh, what, what have you experienced? And we'll give this a couple minutes, see what we can do and go from there. Um, mainly what I've seen in the workplace uh, is a lot of competitive, especially in sales, that's why I use an example. And then for a lot of other people, you'll see it be single player, where it'll be like attendance rewards. If you make perfect attendance, you know, you'll, you'll get a prize. Um, those, are, those are good examples. So we'll give this a minute or two. Oh, nice. Nice. We got a cooperative. So are we going back into Menti with this code? Yep. This is a new code right here at the top. Cool. Actually, I think I can copy the link here too for you. So let's see if I can throw this in here. All right. And yeah, that that's what gets I'm not unsurprised by seeing competitive be one of the big ones. Um, businesses tend to think of it as the most natural form of gamification. In my mind, it's, it's really not though, because it individually helps your company, but do companies succeed based off of one individual or based off of groups, right? And that kind of driving philosophy is what, you know, defines whether you use competitive, single player, or cooperative. All right, uh, yeah, so mostly competitive. I, I would agree with that. Um, I'm interested, I didn't see any single player, but uh, I am glad to see that cooperative exists in there as well. That's pretty pretty crucial for me. And and none, you know, I understand, like not everybody in the world is, is down, down to play. So, I'm gonna move into the actual race framework to begin with. Now, as far as this goes, uh, the way I'm gonna describe this is through our team. So I'm gonna tell a story about the team that I've, I've done this on and kind of experimented with this. But to give you the highlights up front of what the framework is about, it is cooperative gameplay. It is points-based. Um, it is Scrum Agile based, but extremely modifiable. And we'll get into that for those of you who are not in like a development space. And then it, it designs with the power to the players. It, it's designed with power to the players. So players also do objectives. They set everything in the framework. It's not just you're being told what to do and you got to do it. So you interact and you're a part of setting the standards, not just playing the game. And then the last point is team centric rewards. So key here is, you know, you want to make sure everybody is focused on everyone succeeding versus individual success. So they help each other out and kind of grow as a team and have fun. Uh, so I'll start my story here. I, I work at Harlan, as said, and I, I am a scrum master for a couple of teams. And one of my teams, we've been doing this for, oh, I don't even know, almost six, six, eight months, somewhere in there, start of the year. Um, and what happened was, is that we, at the beginning, we, the volatility of work, like how we were delivering work was way up, way down. Like you couldn't really predict what we would do. Um, and the team wasn't super focused on improving that. They were just trying to do what they could do to get through the day and, you know, get work done. So, what I did is I tried to find a way where we could all have fun and enjoy, get a break from work, but also start focusing on how to be better as a team. So 
with that in mind, like the first thing I kind of thought of was like, of course, well, we need to know where we're going and what we're doing. So the first thing I did was kind of build out a scorecard. So the way these scorecards work is there are objectives, there's the points possible, the actual points you get, right? And how to score, that's pretty basic. Um, the key is, is that these are all defined and agreed upon through the team. They're not individually done by me as, you know, a person in control or any other person outside the team. The team discusses and achieves these. My goal is to kind of show you how we did that and then see if you guys can apply it to your own situations as needed. So going into specifics now, uh, the first column is objectives. And that's really like, what do you want to do? So when we're talking about this on a team level, what did we want to improve upon? Well, one of the things is, was we have meetings at the start of every day to kind of gain alignment and, you know, get up to speed. So the first one was this stand up ceremony attendance. That was, that was important. And I'll be honest, it was really important to me, but they went along with it and were very generous in letting me put it on there. So I appreciated it. Um, they also were like, well, hang on, we want to plan more because it's, we're, we're, we're kind of rocky sometimes. And we're not sure what our planning is. So like, okay, so let's put one in about having a swarm, which is everybody get together and plan their work. And then, okay, let's have a, another swarm, which is everybody getting together to get one piece of, of, you know, work through. And in development more world, we call it a user story. But so they're like, that was important to them because they wanted to be more intentional about what they're doing and they wanted to make sure they're staying connected to each other. And so the last one, they're like, well, we don't, we want to be high quality. So if something makes it from us to a production environment or outside of our area of influence, we should, we should have an objective based around those issues and how they could impact us. So this kind of covered those, those those areas now there were more objectives in this but this is a good kind of high level overview so once we had these objectives right the next bit was is to get into well how do we score them how do we value them and so this goes a couple of different ways but uh there's so the key here is is points possible is the total points we're willing to allot to a thing here you see it's 10 10 10 so in, according to the team these are all equal in terms of priority. Now, let's say post-deployment issues are easy. They're not a problem. So they reduce it down to five and they move those points up to everybody needs to be in meetings because nobody's making meetings. You can do that. So shifting points around, having more points in more important areas, less amount of points in less areas, totally fine. So that's how you kind of gear the points. And then the actual points are based off of how to score, right? And there's two ways we advocate with that. The first is uh, percent or sliding scale. And the second is uh, kind of like incremental, if that makes sense. So like if you see down here, this one dealt with the post-deployment issues. So they wanted to say, OK, hang on. We, we only want to lose two points per issue. So it'll take five issues for us to completely lose all points. So, so the key here is you're getting some points at each part of the phase and it's not all or nothing because that, that doesn't motivate anybody up oh, we missed it the first time no points we can continue to mess it the rest of the time that, that doesn't work well for anyone so this is where we get into that kind of example scenario here um uh, for instance uh, this is a sprint example but think about it this way you have two weeks of time and i say we're committing to doing 10 items at the beginning of that time frame and we want to make sure we complete all 10 items okay so well how much is it worth to us well team in negotiation with you know me as a scrum master and the other people involved it's 10 points great all right so how do we achieve those points well in this case if you only complete half of the work that you committed to up front you only get half the points then a third a third it's pretty straight transfer over but doing so allows for enablement to say even though we're not getting we're not all the way there we're only part of the way there we're still getting acknowledgement for that part and it's motivating us to grow further so it helps you kind of stretch into it because we'll get to this later you shouldn't get all the points that's not the goal so one other thing that's important about points is dealing with points as stretch goals which are bonus points 
So the team sets a lot of the points that are in the sprint, the objectives and whatnot. But other people kind of want to help the team improve too. For instance, like your leadership might, you know, a director might be like, man, I really wish they'd do this. Or maybe their direct manager, I, I would like this or, or whatever the case may be. Or a situation comes up that they handle and crush, even though it's in the middle of their sprint. And, and though they handle it, now that puts some of their objectives at, at risk. These are all situations where bonus points come into play. So on my team, for instance, they had a deploy, took them forever, and it cost them some ability to do some of their work. Well, we gave them points as bonus points to offset that because we recognize that they are still working hard. They just didn't have the ability or the foreknowledge because no one's sighted, at least on my team, um, to, to see that. Right. And so we don't want them to feel disheartened because they didn't accomplish their work and do the other thing that magically appeared. So we offset using these extra points. So uh, again, that's one way to handle it. The other is, is, is a kind of a, a motivational tool like, hey, you know, you're doing great, but what if we had more automation? What if we had this shiny? And so then you can use it as kind of bait for the team to say, well, can we get can, can we get this and we'll give you some extra points? And the team accepts those opportunities, but they're just, they accept them. They're not committing to them. So they're not saying we'll do this for sure, but what we hear you, this is an option. If we have time for it, we'll get it done. So this is kind of where we drive into a point totals. And these are a lot of questions that traditionally kind of come up with that. And one of the things to kind of keep in mind is how many points per iteration, how many iterations and when to spend the points. So to talk about this, iteration just means a top block of time. So you're gonna wanna have a block of time that you play the game in, right? That's a round, for instance. So I could easily set a round here instead of iteration. But how many points is kind of up to you. My recommendation is 100 points per round or iteration. And mainly because it's a nice round number, it's three figures, it makes it, it gives you a lot of variety inside of that. Um, and then how many iterations or rounds before you start a new game? Generally, I would recommend this on a quarter basis or less. So you want to have enough so you can build up some points, but you also want to potentially have less than that. Um, you don't want to go too long, I should say. So if you go for a year with points, that's that's way too long. You want to encourage those points to be gathered in a specific time frame and used. So again, quarter or less tends to be a good time frame for that. And then when to spend points is one of the most critical issues. So we'll get into what points get you in a moment. But a key here is you want to have the points being spent on fun things for the team, and the team team's the one that spends them on a pretty regular basis. Uh, ideally, you don't wanna go a quarter or two quarters without a team spending those points. Sometimes it's it's just the nature of the game because you're busy and a fully committed team to the work is gonna recognize when's a good time versus a not good time for it. But ideally in every sort of round or every couple of rounds or a couple times per quarter, somewhere in that time frame is what you wanna go with because otherwise, they're putting all the work but not getting rewards it really doesn't it's not a great feedback mechanism and doesn't really make it fun all right so now talking about rewards so i want to talk first about how to shape rewards and then we'll get into the buying of rewards so the rewards aren't external the team comes up with the rewards and rewards fall into generally one of two buckets they fall into time or money so getting lunch uh, delivered to your house, that's money, right? And then uh, taking a few hours to game, which is my team's favorite way to spend this time, take a few work hours and they'll go, we'll go play whatever game people want to play. We've done Minecraft, um, Rocket League. I, I could go on, um, but uh, that's time. So time is critical because if you're doing work right, this has to give you a higher level of work than you had previously to justify that time. And then money, you know, well, money's money. That's pretty straightforward. So the team thinks about rewards that are both time, money, or both related. 
another one is uh, I make beef jerky. My team likes my beef jerky. So occasionally they bought beef jerky with their points, um, which is super flattering to me. I don't know. That's I don't know. fun. Right? Okay, so That's really cool. You're in Oklahoma, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. The little drive by. Yeah. Yeah. Any, <laughs> I mean, you'll have to let me know to make sure I have some in, in stock, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was the one that got brainstormed up, right? I was like, well, I make beef jerky. If you guys want to try it, you know, great. So there's cost to me, but then I just expense that cost because leadership accepted the cost for it. Um, so once the team has kind of a list of ideas, leadership's job is to review those ideas and assign point values. Now, we don't want to see some arbitrary thing like 30, 347 points for this particular one item. That's way too complicated. We just want them in buckets, small, medium, large. And a small is generally, I'm going to use the example of 100 points. A small should be a reward that can happen inside one iteration or round. A medium, every couple of iterations around, and a large is once per the entire quarter or larger time box. And, and they should reflect that number of points. So whatever number of points you use, like I said, if it's, we'll say it's nine, no, hang on, six, six rounds, one quarter, we'll say six rounds, that's 600 points. A large reward would be like somewhere in the 500 range, where a small should be around the 80. Key being is they're not going to get all the points all the time. So you want it to be inherently achievable, not the max. So it's not going to be, this is a hundred points. That's a two iteration reward because they're not always going to get there. So time is great on that. Like I said, most leadership love time. Money seems to be tight up front, but once they start seeing the value of this and how this is helping you guys, they tend to back that idea. So we're going to go through the rules. Um, these, these rules are designed to guide good practice um, and they have some philosophy behind them. Uh, no direct monetary rewards allowed. Re oh my gosh, sorry. No direct monetary rewards allowed. Uh, so with that, that, there's an interesting thing out there where money doesn't really motivate over long term. Um, it's great for, I'll pay you 20 bucks to do this thing, but the next time I'll pay you 20 bucks to do the same thing. People are less inclined to do it time over time. So money is not a great way to like, play the game because it doesn't provide the correct level of like fun and you're just telling people to go away take this money and do what you want with it you want it to be fun for the people involved um on that note no individual rewards like you don't want bob to go off and do one thing sally to go off and do another you want your team to be rewarded for being a good team for for being meshing well and getting stuff done and now that doesn't mean everybody on the team has to do the same thing, but like, you know, you could have a couple people playing Minecraft and a couple people playing Rocket League, for instance, that's still playing together as a team. It's just having a connected experience is more powerful than having a bunch of individual experiences. The next rule is kind of critical. So a lot of, a lot of problems come up when you aren't able to set your own things you want to improve upon. And that's really what an objective is. If you're told from an outside source, this is what you have to improve upon, that's not as engaging to you as say, how do you want to improve? And let's make it a game. So in this, everyone gets to set those objectives because with that, it allows you to have a voice in how you as a group are you know, improving. So this is my favorite rule. Uh, a lot of people ask, well, how do you keep people from gaming the system, from making it work for them instead of being a tool for improvement? Well, uh, I treat people like adults. Like if you're an adult, you know this has to be done. Um, and if you if you try to manipulate or game the system, the, the game is over. Like that's that's just a simple rule. It, it may sound harsh or whatever, but like like you're an adult, you know that you know you know how this works. This is for fun. If if you're gonna make it not fun, why why will we keep going? Um, and then on the same note as before with objectives, it is also extremely important that everybody can challenge an objective. So challenging means I think we're way too good. We don't need this objective anymore. I think we need to make it harder. I think this is really difficult. So I don't want to do it anymore. I want to make it easier. Those kind of things. So everybody has a voice not only in setting 
but adjusting the objectives as they go along. And uh, my next favorite rule, objectives by design are to become more difficult. So what's the fun in a game that stays the same, right? Once you beat a game, it becomes really boring, unless you're a completionist. But even if you're a completionist, your game is completing everything, and then the game's boring. So this, this system, it says, okay, so if you're mastering an objective. Um, apparently a machine made for streaming just decided to die, but I'll give it back to Mark Shade, the speaker, to go ahead and take it away for us. Thanks, Doji. I know that frazzled you slightly. All right, um, I'm going a, I'm to a touch on these, these rewards here. And uh, we've talked about these, I think, but I'm not sure. So I'm just going to go over them again, like at a high level. Um, direct money, monetary rewards, not allowed. That's mainly due to the fact that direct, just giving money is not a fun or engaging experience, number one. And two, it's not very motivating long term. Um, next one's no individual rewards. This is about being a team. So being a team, you want to do things together. That doesn't mean everybody has to do the same thing, but you want to have group activities, not everybody off doing their own thing as a reward. Um, the next one's a critically important one. Everyone gets to set objectives in the game. Everybody gets a voice in how they're improving. They're not, the team isn't just being told how to improve. They're, they're improving based off of what they as a group want to. All right, moving along here. Um, the next next rule deals with, well, what happens if a person tries to game the system? Well, the way I deal with that, everybody's an adult. Uh, if you're gonna game a system that is meant to make work more enjoyable for you, honestly, we're, just stop playing the game. Like it, the value is in improvement and getting better, not just in getting rewarded. It's, it's a combination, it's a trade back and forth. Next one deals with, uh, for team members, any team member can challenge an objective, it's by design. So you can say like, hey, I think we need to alter the amount of points we get for like a rule. So it, the deploy example earlier, well, it's two per, mistake let's make it five let's make it hurt when we make mistakes because we gotten good at not making too many mistakes and so you can make objectives harder or less hard um, it's designed to kind of be a challenge and introspective point and then points shouldn't be all or nothing so they'll be awarded by percent or sliding scale but you you aren't just going to have you do this or not it's going to be like what are the stages of doing it and the point of that is, is the first time you do it, you might get 50% of those rewards. Next time, 75. Although if it's all or nothing, those would both be zero, right? So those aren't really beneficial to a team to have all or nothing. But to be able to see that progress as you slowly achieve that reward over various, you know, rounds or iterations is pretty powerful feeling for people. Uh, next one, whole team must agree on what reward to choose to cash in. Again, team game. So you guys need to agree together what to do. As I said previously, my team loves game time. So they stack hands on doing games together and then they, they play them. Uh, the whole team should receive the reward. So you can't say, hey, you, you didn't do a lot this spring. You don't get the reward. No, the team succeeds or fails as a team. So everybody gets the reward. Uh, the next one's kind of tricky, but basically what it means is, if you're trying to receive a reward and you're picking a reward that that's you know for one sprint it should be equivalent uh, uh, iteration or round two um it should be equivalent to that one that one deal uh so less valuable more valuable rewards should be rewarded with you know to go out to david busters i'll say um that'd be a high reward so it's going to take a lot of points but that is a good reward for that you don't want to say, okay, 500 points for a $5 gift card for, gift card for everyone. It, that's a lot of points for very little reward. It's not very motivating. And the next one deals with points, and uh, they expire at the end of a quarter. Now, this is key. Um, if you keep stacking points quarter over quarter, uh, it's going to make the person who's running the game very frazzled because what will happen is that they will sit there and – uh, 
stack like 4,000 points. And they'll be like, well, we're taking off the entire next week to play games because we have that many points. But the thing is, is it doesn't benefit the team either because the team had to work for a year without any sort of points for the game to get that same deal. So that that's not fun for either group of people. So you expire them so they get used inside of those time blocks. The most important rule. Rules can be broken. These are here just to guide good practice, but they are not here to be completely enforced without any regard to your particular scenario. Uh, our team doesn't follow all these rules all the time, and that's okay. But as long as we keep to that, we understand why we're going away from the rules and what our needs are, that's more important than just following the system just as it's laid out. So this is a bit about Scrum, but I'm gonna talk about this in terms of rounds for you guys too. So if you're familiar with Scrum events, you can see the Scrum events at the bottom. Mainly what I'm gonna discuss is the important parts, which is planning the objectives, keeping the objectives in sight, and inspect and adapt the objectives. So getting into the first one, planning. So you wanna have a meeting at the start of your round that you can plan your objectives. So, hey, here's the 10 objectives that we're gonna do this round. Here's the points we're associating with them. And then here's how we're gonna score them. Does everybody kind of agree or wanna modify or change? And you can carry over the same objectives from last round. In fact, a lot of times do that, but just adjust them slightly. And then also this is where you would add bonus points. So if leadership's like, we'd really like this, this other thing too, great. We'll add that in as bonus points for the team to focus on if they can. The next part is dealing with the stand-up portion or daily kind of reminder. Hey, guys, don't forget, we got these objectives we're doing. Don't forget to keep your eye on them and make sure that we're accomplishing them. And then pointing out opportunities where you can get those bonus points. So let's say one of them is, hey, as a team, we want you all to work the same thing together, but we're not making an objective, but it's a bonus. So we'll say one day someone's like, I could use help. You say, hey, great, that person can use help. Guys, there's an opportunity. If you all help them, you can get some bonus points. So it's kind of guiding in the thought of keeping these in mind instead of making them a background object. Um, and the last thing is kind of a retrospective in terms of sprint terminology. But what you're doing is, is at the end of the round or iteration, you want to inspect the objectives. You want to talk about what was challenging for you in those objectives, what was successful for you, and what to improve upon. And that's both in the objectives themselves and in how you accomplish those objectives inside of that, that time period. And this allows your team a chance to see how you're improving, what you could improve on more, and kind of ideate on how to do more of that in the future as well. So this is kind of a wider thought here. So one of the problems is, is well, yeah, this all sounds great, but I don't know how to get my leadership to, to want to do this or be engaged to do this. And so, I found, I found a magic word when it comes to leadership. If you frame something as an experiment, uh, leadership's down for that because it, okay, if it's an experiment, it can end if it's bad. So it's not something that's necessarily ongoing. It's something we can try out. And then if it works for us, great. And if it doesn't, great. The trick is, is that on your end, you run the experiment. And then what you do is you propose how to improve the experiment. So the experiment continues on after the initial box. So you keep getting better. And leadership really likes that as well. So the other key thing is don't say we're magically going to do 500% more work than we're doing now. You're not. This is something that you're going to see gradual improvement over time with. So present this as an experiment that will uh, over time see net gain, but not necessarily immediately. And then lastly, uh, leadership can be a little tricky about money. So saying, hey, what if we did time-based rewards instead. So the team's gonna be producing more work or getting, getting more stuff done. What if we give some of the time back to them? And that's generally an easier sell up front than going straight into like, we need $300 to go to a rage room and, and have a fun night out or, or something of that nature. So this is another tool to help. Um, and I will be, giving the slides out so you have access to this. But uh, this is a great tool here where what this is, is this tells you the psychology of what you are as a gamer. 
So this is mine. I'm an achiever explorer mostly. I like to get lots of, you know, the Xbox achievements and I like to explore everything in the environment. But if you know this and everybody in the team knows kind of what they are and what their teammates are for how they like to play, you can frame objectives towards that. So you want to be an achiever? Well, objectives are just naturally designed for that. So that's not really hard. But you want to explore? Well, what about uh, learning something new about the system being an objective or, or, or bonus points? And so you can drive in things that will engage each person by understanding their types. Now, killer is PvP, so that's some more competitive stuff, but you can still play with those kind of concepts, and it just gives you a way to be informed about the people that are actually playing the game. So you might not remember, but at the beginning, there's a quote, and I actually chopped the quote in half. So this part of the quote is my favorite, which is the creative mind plays with the objects it loves. And to me, it really resonates because here's the thing. We all do work all the time, right? Um, but we don't enjoy or play as much as we should. And part of this is to help build a bridge to enjoying and playing through like, man, I love being able to be, be my own, own boss and getting objectives and things out there. It, it helps us bring back that enjoyment to what we're doing versus just doing something just so we get a paycheck at the end of the day. And as counterintuitive as it sounds, because you enjoy and because you're playing with the thing, you're going to want to do more of it. And in doing more of it, I mean, the business profits, they happily take that, right? But at the same time, it's less of a burden on you as well. So it's my hope that this, these kinds of systems can help make it enjoyable and fun to come back to work and less frazzled in your day-to-day -day lives. Uh, and on that note, got one more mentee for you. How many times did I say the word for the today? And I will bring up the slide here. And uh, Tori, if you would either message me on Slack or Google with the number, I'll, yeah. we'll see who gets it right. Uh, and I want to, I'll talk to that question while we're doing this. Um, I see that one in chat. What are the benefits that a leader should expect from this? So one of the biggest benefits is, is that the leader can see what motivates and guides the team because the team is setting objectives. It allows the leader to put in objectives or bonus point objectives is what I'm talking about here to help encourage the team stretch further. But the goal here is they get an empowered team that has high agency to do work that is constantly focused on improving. So when you look at uh, benefits, it's you have a team that's flatline that is just doing work in the day-to-day day -day process versus a team that's inspecting. The team that's inspecting and adapting their processes to do work is going to end up doing much more work, either higher quality, a more work, or be better, better prepared for the work than your team that is not inspecting. So those would be the benefits. Um, looking for a design team, what ways might this process be customized for a design team? Uh, so what I would do is the only thing you need to really tweak would be the pro in, I'm not a designer, I'm going to be honest with you. So part of this is going to come from leveraging your guys's creative creativity from mine. Um, but imagine the work you do as a designer, imagine how you do the work that you do. Now imagine all the ways that you would like to do that work better, like either things that you control or things that are controlled out externally. And then imagine those things being the things you focus on week after week in a game to be able to improve upon over time. So to me, it's I would adapt them to whatever the processes and ways of delivery are. Now, now here's a key thing. Some of them aren't direct. Like I need to draw faster. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. Again, not a designer, guys. Just apologize on that. But um, it's not about your work so much as it. We we need to protect our time better, so we have time to be creative. So you could have an objective that says everybody spends exactly half their time out of meetings, and see see what kind of result you get out of that. Then, so it's about getting what you need to do your job better 
more than anything else. All right, I don't see any votes yet. Has anyone, no guesses at all? I mean, we might have lost some people during a, yeah. our technical difficulties. That's that's fine. I'll, <laughs> I'll move on because, I, I mean, we're moving into the, the question and answer anyway. So I want to make sure that we're, we're hitting on that. It's, so, uh, so what I would like is any questions, we've already started answering them or any feedback <clears throat> that you had, I am down for. My goal is hopefully I provided something of use to you, but if there are things I can improve upon, please let me know. Um, also, if you have any questions, I'm in the Oklahoma Slack. Um, feel free to reach out with specific instances and I'll happily kind of give you ideas on how to overcome specific scenarios as well. But uh, that, that's basically it, except for if there are any other questions. So we had some guesses from a different oh. channel. Um, somebody, I, his name is named AC, ha heard two <laughs> twice. Was it two? Nope. nope. Oh, sorry. It wasn't AC. It was a uh, a Patrick. You, Patrick heard. Do you lose Cooper. points? <laughs> no. <get> wrong? <laughs> no. This is strictly for fun. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the guess that we have. Okay. Two. Yeah. Uh, Tori, how many did you count? Okay, I counted three total. That's what I had too. So, yeah, three. Three. Sorry for the low low amount, but yeah, yeah. It was, three all right <laughs> well uh if there are no other we questions do? we have one minute so i'll just ask um a quick question um from our slack what ways might this process be customized for a design team sure i i slightly addressed that before but just touching on that again um i would say look at the way you do work versus mm. the way you what work you do so don't don't go for okay this is a thing I need to do and I need to have X amount of units across the line because you're doing creative work. That's not gonna help you. But how are you doing work? And what could you improve about the ways that you are doing work? So do you, are you in a ton of meetings? Are your meetings spread out through the day so you really can't get into a creative space between them? Well, that might be an objective to reorganize everybody's meetings so they're in a particular area then. Don't I know that. <laughs> And it is 1230 on the dot. Um, just want to wrap that all up. Um, thank you so much, Mark, for, for coming in. Um, this was really fun and helpful. And yes, Mark's going to send out the slides as well. So that's exciting. Um, we'll have some access to that. And if anyone's interested, Mark, is there anywhere else? So we have the Slack channel. Um, if anyone has follow-up questions. Uh, um, I'm on LinkedIn. If you guys want to follow follow or add me on LinkedIn. It's just my name at, um, is my LinkedIn. So it's Mark Skidday, uh, um, Mark Dash Skidday on LinkedIn. Um, the probably the best ways to get a hold of me are those two. Uh, but yeah, awesome. I appreciate you guys having me. It's a blast. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark. We loved it. And um, stay tuned. We're working on our October event. It'll be the late October. And um, we'll let everyone know via LinkedIn and Slack when that comes up and who our speak will be. So thank you guys. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you.